All right, welcome back to this second lecture today on Revelation Daniel. I hope uh, all of you are following with me. So what we, we arrived at Revelation chapter 16, verses 12 to 14, which is the sixth angel uh, pouring out the bowl. And that sixth angel, which is, uh, you know, the, the second last judgment, is really a buildup of the battle of Armageddon. So what it's saying is when that sixth angel poured out that bowl, the river Euphrates dried up, demon spirits were released on the earth to go and mobilize the kings of the earth, that is the leaders, uh, the kings of the east. So we are looking at countries east of Israel. Um, many people think this has a big reference to, you know, Russia and China, because they are both major countries east of Israel, and uh, um, they will be mobilized to come towards uh, Israel, and not only uh, kings of the east, but it also says uh, armies of the whole world, kings of the whole world. So this is, you know, world war, a world war that's being built, beginning to be built up. So that's Revelation 16. Now, what uh, is interesting is there are parallel passages to Revelation 16, 12 to 14. So you need to remember Joel chapter 3. We read a few verses from Joel 3. Uh, I didn't read all the verses, but you can read the whole chapter. Uh, Joel 3 verses 1 and 2. God says, you know, I will gather my people back in Israel. Then the nations will come against Israel. And the reason is because they have divided up my land. And then we read a few other verses um, in Joel chapter 3, where it says their armies are gathering together to the valley of Jehoshaphat. Another uh, other, uh, passage uh, or uh, chapters, Ezekiel chapter 38 and 39. These are two chapters, again, describing this final battle of our armies coming against Israel. So when you read Ezekiel 38, um, we know when you ask the question, what time is he referring to, Ezekiel? He says, in the latter years, that is verse 8, Ezekiel 38, verse 8. He repeats that again in Ezekiel 38, verse 16. He says, it will be in the latter days, Ezekiel 38, verse 16. So I'm just referring to some scriptures here in 38, Ezekiel 38, verse 16. In the latter days, I will bring you against my land, so the nations may know me that I will be hallowed in you, O Gog, before the eyes. So Gog, Magog, Rosh, Jubal, Meshach, people are referred to these as tribes in and around Russia and so on. Uh, and, you know, they, 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 try, they try to... Uh, say roughly this, 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 in this region. So Russia is a major player here, and uh, uh, and then uh, you have Persia, Ethiopia, Libya, representing the Arab nations. So they form uh, an alliance with um, Russia, um, and they begin to move against Israel. So God is saying, so what what the time period is talking about in the latter days? He mentions that twice in verse eight and verse sixteen in. Ezekiel 38, and it says, you know, an evil thought will come into your mind. I'm going to go to this people who are living peacefully, that is the people of Israel, and I'm going to go attack them. So that's how this whole thing is going to start. There's going to be this, this initial move of Russia against Israel and some of its allied countries. And... Uh, but when you read Ezekiel 38 and 39... What happens is the uh, uh, so if you look at Ezekiel thirty nine, okay, I'm just going to reference certain verses. You can read both these chapters. Uh, in thirty nine, it's verses one and two. He says, "And you, son of man, prophesy against Gog, and say, Thus says the Lord God: Behold, I'm against you, O Gog, the prince of Rosh, Meshach, and Tubal." So again, he's referring to Gog. Gog is like the head of the uh, Russia, Meshach, and Tubal, these tribes that are in Russia, Rosh, Meshach, and Tubal, the leader, says, I will turn you around and lead you on, bringing you up from the north, far north and bring you against the mountains of Israel. Now, again, that's very interesting because just right up north of Israel is Moscow. If you look at the map, world map, the way things are is, uh, it's really interesting uh, let me see here. Uh, 
um, yeah, let's try to show, show us that. Um, um, and it's quite interesting to see this. Oh. One minute, just hold on, please. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, right. I just want to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So just north of Israel is Moscow. And I, I just thought that if you, you know, if we have a look at it and, uh, um, you know, it's it'll be just oh All right, so, whoops. Um, I just want to quickly share this with you so you can see it. Okay, you see, this is where Moscow is, right, on the map, okay? This is Russia, huge landmass. Moscow is right here, and just directly Israel is right here, this tiny, tiny, tiny piece of land right here, this little dot here, Israel, okay? And straight up north to Israel is Moscow, just right up north. North of Israel is Moscow, right? And God, if you look at Ezekiel 39, verse 2, bring... I will turn you around and lead you on, bringing you up from the far north and bring you against the mountains of Israel. Who? He said, Gog, the prince of Rosh, Meshach, and Chibo. I will bring you from the far north against the mountains of Israel. Far north, Israel, right here. It's almost, you know, like straight north of Israel. So it's pretty interesting to see, you know, um, uh, for what, what is written here, Ezekiel 39, verse 1 and 2. Very interesting. Hmm? Speaking to the prince of Gog, uh, Gog, who is the prince of Rosh, Meshach, and Tubal, tribes that probably are in Russia. And he says, I will bring you from the far north against the mountains of Israel. And, uh, you know, if you look, if you read through the details, what will happen is, uh, as, as, as Russia moves towards Israel, God will intervene, and Israel will actually push Russia back. Well, Israel will actually defeat Russia. It says that if you read on in Ezekiel 39, verse 11, it'll come to verse 11. It'll come to pass in that day that I'll give Gog a burial place there in Israel, the valley of those who pass by east by east of the sea, will obstruct travelers, because there they will bury Gog and all his multitude. Therefore, they will call it the valley of Haman Gog. For seven months, the house of Israel will be burying them in order to cleanse the land. In other words, they are going to come, but Israel is going to defeat them. And they're going to bury them there. They're going, to, they're going to be destroyed. So uh, that's what it says there in verse 11. Right? Uh, they will not be able to defeat Israel because God himself is going to defend the land. And then, you know, and it's going to be, it's going to take uh, so much time to, you know, just to clean up uh, the land uh, you know, and so on. 
So you can read, you know, Ezekiel 38 and 39, which is describing this whole movement of nations into the value of, of Jehoshaphat or calling it, uh, or as Revelation 16, 12 says, the battle of Armageddon. There's one more chapter that is descriptive of this final battle, which is Zechariah, the 14th chapter. So remember, Joel chapter 3, Ezekiel chapter 38, chapters 38 and 39, and also Zechariah chapter 14. So again, I'll just, uh, uh, you know, reference Zechariah, the, the 14th chapter, and um, uh, look at some verses there. Now, uh, in verse 2, Zechariah chapter 14, verse 2. Okay, again, you, you know, I'd encourage you to read this full chapter. All these chapters that I mentioned, Joel chapter 3, Ezekiel 38 and 39, Zechariah 14, tie back to Revelation chapter 16, verses 12 to 40, the battle of Armageddon. Okay, but uh, I'm just giving you a few verses. And we're just reading a few verses there from Zechariah 14. Notice what he says in verse 2. Verse 1, the day of the Lord is coming. So he's talking about the day of the Lord. And we know that's a phrase that is used often towards the end of times. And in some cases, the day of the Lord is used specifically for the battle of Armageddon. So he says the day of the Lord is coming. What will happen? Verse 2, I will gather all the nations to battle against Jerusalem. Okay, same thing, same thing. I will gather all the nations to battle against Jerusalem. So that's how we know Zechariah 14 is referencing this battle of Armageddon because it's all nations coming against Jerusalem, right? And then he describes what will happen. What will happen, verse 3, the Lord will go forth and fight against those nations as he fights in the day of battle. So God himself is going to fight for Israel. On that day. How is that going to happen? Verse 4. In that day, his feet will stand on the Mount of Olives, which faces Jerusalem on the east. And the Mount of Olives shall be split in two. Oh, now this is talking about Jesus. His feet, uh, uh, Zechariah 14, for his feet will stand on the Mount of Olives, now, where did Jesus ascend into heaven from? Mount of Olives. What did the angels say? The same Jesus whom you see go will come in like soul-like manner. Zechariah 14.4 His feet will stand on the Mount of Olives. So, the Lord Jesus is coming back. And so this is taking us to Revelation 19. We're going to read that. When he comes, where is he going to land? He's going to land right there on the Mount of Olives, Zechariah 14. And he's going to defend, he's going to fight against all the nations. And it says here, the Mount of Olives will be split into two. Uh, in uh, in uh, Ezekiel, uh, I, I didn't point this out, but in Ezekiel 38, verse 19, God says, surely there'll be a great earthquake in the land of Israel. Ezekiel 38, verse 19. Now, this is during the Battle of Armageddon time. He said, there's going to be a great earthquake. Is, uh, uh, Zechariah 14.4, the Mount of Olives will be split into two. right? And uh, it'll go north and south. So half, and it'll, it'll make a large valley, a very large valley, half toward the north and half toward the south. The mountain will move. So imagine this. And uh, the... Uh, verse chapter 14, verse 5. Thus the Lord my God will come and all the saints with you. You know, so beautiful this is. Thus the Lord my God will come and all the saints with you. That's Revelation chapter 19. When Jesus returns, he will come with all the saints. And uh, if you turn with me to uh, Jude, just look at Jude and you please... Um, uh, somebody could read verse 14 and 15, Jude chapter 1, verses 14 and 15, please. Yeah. 
Somebody could read that. Jude chapter 1, 14 and 15. All right, Thomas. Yes, Pastor, one moment, I'll check in there. Okay, okay. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm moving through the chapters very fast here and there, but <laughs> uh, it's all very... No, it's all a connected. small chapter, right? It's quite difficult to... Uh, the old I, pages, that's why. Right. I find it... Uh, verses 14, right? 14 and 15, yes. Yeah, 14 and 15. Now, Enoch, the seventh from Adam, prophesied about this man also saying, Behold, the Lord comes with the 10,000 of his saints to execute judgment on all, to convict all who are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds, which they have committed to in ungodly way, and of all the harsh things which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. Hmm. That is, Enoch prophesied, the Lord comes with 10,000 of his saints to execute judgment. So we are reading now in Zechariah 14, verse 5. Thus the Lord my God will come and all the saints with you. Hmm? He's talking again. God is coming. He's going to defend Israel. The saints are going to come with him. And uh, I'm just jumping to certain verses here. Verse 9 of Zechariah 14. And the Lord shall be king over all the earth. In that day it shall be. Um, the Lord is one and his name is one. And how is it going to happen? Verse 12. And this shall be the plague with which the Lord will strike all the people who fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh will dissolve and they stand on their feet. Their eyes shall dissolve in their sockets and their tongues shall dissolve in their mouths. So you see, the Lord is going to come. This is Revelation chapter you know, 19, the battle of Armageddon. When, the Jesus, when Jesus comes, he will come right on the Mount of Olives and uh, and all these things will take place, right? So back to Revelation 16. So in Revelation 16, verses 12 to 14, this build up to the battle of Armageddon is uh, there are the prophets who spoke of this day and this time, right? So we saw how Ezekiel chapter 38 and 39 speaks of what's going to happen. We saw how Joel chapter 3 speaks of this. We saw how Zechariah chapter 14 speaks of this, this whole battle of Armageddon. Okay, so they're all going to be gathered together in this battle of Armageddon. Now, from the, the references mentioned, we can say the kings of the east, armies, nations to the east of Israel are going to move in. Kings of the north, Russia, coming in. And, uh, against Israel. Okay. So, Revelation chapter 16, let's read verses 17 to 21. This is the last one, last judgment. Revelation chapter 16, 17 to 21. Somebody can read that for us, please. Revelation chapter 7, 16, 17 to 21. Then the seven angels poured out his bowl into the air, and a loud voice came out to the temple of heaven from the throne, saying, It is done. And there were noise and thundering and lightning, and there was a great earthquake, such a mighty and great earthquake as had not occurred since men were on the earth. Now the great city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell, and great Babylon was remembered before God to give her the cup of the wine of the fair senses of his birth. Then every island filled, fled away, and the mountains were not found, and great hill from heaven fell upon men each hills stone about the weight of the talent men blessed God because of the plug 
because of the plug of the hail since that plug was extremely great mm. so this last judgment uh there are you know this uh, verse 18 is it revelation 70 16 verse 18 It's talking about thunderings lightnings great earthquake so you know these are weather related phenomena thunderings lightnings and a great earthquake and uh, we saw in Ezekiel 38 verse 19 that there's going to be a great earthquake all in this time of this battle of armageddon build up and um, it says this great city was divided into three parts right so uh, and that great city here is referring to uh, uh, the uh, sorry here verse 19 there's a great earthquake in israel so that great city is divided into three parts but it's also announcing the fall of great babylon which we will see in chapter 17 and 18 okay now babylon that we are going to see in 7 chapter 17 18 is not referring to the physical city of babylon so when it talks about great babylon which one of the angels had announced uh, this is in revelation 14 verse 8 you know babylon is not referring to the physical city is referring to something else which we will explain in chapter 17 18 but there is a great earthquake in the land of israel that takes place big so this final judgment poured out is lightning thunderings great earthquake and uh, uh things are happening on the earth men are just getting angry with god and blaspheming god so where are we now we are towards the end of the seven year tribulation okay what is happening there's been this build up of the battle of armageddon for the battle of armageddon armies are beginning to move towards israel we saw that there's going to be the armies of the east from the north and it says the whole world armies of the world they're all building up there's a great earthquake all this is happening so we are towards the end of the seven years of tribulation and the battle armageddon is going to happen but just before it happens as the nations are beginning to move towards Israel and Jerusalem specifically two things happen that is chapter 17 and 18 great babylon is shaken now what is great babylon basically great babylon refers to this world religious system that was introduced by the false prophet because it is man's attempt to replace god great babylon also refers to the world economic system which the antichrist had put in place so in revelation chapter 17 this religious system is referred to as mystery babylon so the word mystery is always used in scripture especially in the new testament scripture to refer to uh, things that are spiritual in nature mystery the mystery of god the mystery that is revealed to us in christ and so on so revelation 17 refers to mystery babylon the the religious system and we, when we read chapter 17 it'll become clear i'm just you know giving us an introduction there revelation 18 refers to the great city babylon and you will see that the great city babylon is not referring to the physical city but is referring to this economic system that all the nations people from all nations are part of 
So both these two things collapse, they fall, they disintegrate, they, people reject these things, it's just gone. So as the nations are building up towards the battle of Armageddon, the world religious system and the world economic system collapse. Now, you know, based on what we have seen happen in the last month or so, it becomes, makes a lot of sense. I mean, we can, can imagine it happening. So in the last month or so, um, when nations started sanctioning Russia ex economically, primarily the EU and a few other countries, they impose economic sanctions against Russia. You see, it, it hit the hit Russia hard, and they're still feeling it. You know, it's still happening. It's going on. Um, within a month's time, within a month's time, things have become very difficult in Russia. In other words, the economic system has is taken a hard hit. People had money invested in different places. Money just suddenly disappeared or devalued uh, almost in a matter of days. Gone. So the economic system was hit very hard. Now you can imagine when nations, now this is, you know, some nations against Russia. But when you think about the Battle of Armageddon, it's going to be nations. The whole world is going to come against, either you're for Israel or you're against Israel, you're on one side or the other side, they're coming. And a lot of things are going to happen. So obviously in the process, they're going to reject this religious system, which was worship of the, the beast. And they're going to reject this economic system. So we don't want to be part of it. It's going to collapse. And it can happen like that. So, when you look at Revelation 17, uh, let's um, read uh, verses 1 to 5, please. We will look into this. Revelation 17, verses 1 to 5. Somebody could read that. Conan? Revelation 17, 1 to 5. Um, Revelation 17, yeah. 1 to 5. Go ahead, Prince. Then, then one of the seven angels who had the seven poles come and talk over. With me, saying to me, Come, I will show you the judgment of the great horror who sit on and the inhabitant of the earth were made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he cried uh, cried me away in the spirit into the wilderness. And I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet base, which was full of name of blasphemy, having seven heads on the ten horn. The woman was arrayed in pur, uh, purple and scarlet and adorned with gold and precious stone and pearls, having in her head a golden cup full of abominations and the fit, uh, filthiness of her fornication, and on her forehead a name was written, Mystery Babylon, the great, the mother of her lords, and of the abominations of the earth. I saw the woman drunk with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the mystery of Jesus. And when I saw her, I marveled with great amazement. Amazement. Okay, thank you. 
So now, John is saying something. He's saying a woman, and he rec- and, and it's like this is a. He refers to this as a great harlot. This I'm looking at chapter seventeen, verse one. So this angel is showing him this and explaining this. He sees this great this woman who's a great harlot sitting on many waters. Now, this many waters, which we will see in verse 15, Revelation 17, 15, it says, the waters which you saw where the, where the harlot sits are peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues. So when this woman is sitting on the waters, the waters are basically, verse 15, peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues. That means this woman is having influence over the nations, over peoples. That's what it means. This woman is sitting on the waters. The water represents the nation. She is having influence. And this woman is a great harlot, um, a prostitute, a great harlot. Now, in the Bible, spiritual, um, you know, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Unfaithfulness to God, going away from God, replacing God is referred to as spiritual harlotry in the Bible, especially in the Old Testament. So we can understand here that this, this woman, this great harlot, is, 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 is a false religion. It is taking the place of God. It is trying to replace God, and she is sitting over the nations. So that's why we say this woman, that's one first reason why this great harlot is a false religion, that which we know was introduced by the false prophet. And we will see more details on it in this chapter, Revelation 17. And uh, this woman is, uh, she is, uh, uh, you know, she is making people drink of, of her fornication. That means she's causing people to just depart away from God. Again, spiritual harlotry, spiritual fornication means uh, departure from God. And uh, this woman is actually uh, uh, sit on a scarlet beast and she's blaspheming God and uh, having seven heads and ten horns. So this woman is sitting on a scarlet beast. Who is a scarlet beast? A scarlet um, uh, a, a, a beast. This is the same thing as Revelation chapter 13, verse 1 and 2, when we saw the beast. That is the Antichrist. Seven head, ten horns. So the, this woman is sitting on the beast. This beast is carrying this great woman. That means it is the Antichrist who is promoting this woman, who has brought in this woman. So she is riding on this beast. So seven heads and ten horns, Revelation 13, 1 and 2. Right? She is sitting on this beast, scarlet, representing blood, red. We'll see why it's blood red, okay, verse, verse 6. But this woman is riding on the beast. Who is the beast? Antichrist. Seven heads, ten horns, who is blaspheming, blaspheming against God. So she's carried by the beast. And this woman is arrayed in purple and scarlet, so she's royal because people have embraced her. And, uh, you know, she is, you know, being welcomed, embraced, adorned by the nations. And who is this woman? Verse 5, she's Mystery Babylon. Mystery Babylon. Like I said, the word mystery is always used in the context of spiritual things. So that's the second reason we are saying this this woman is a spirit, is representing the false religion that was introduced by the false prophet in order to get the people to worship the beast. False religion. And verse six, what does this what does this religion do? Part of what does this do? She, it says she, she's full of the blood of the saints. So because of this false religion, a lot of people have died. We know that. We saw it earlier in Revelation. Uh, chapter 15, where all these people, they rejected, they refused to worship the image of the beast here in heaven. So here it says, 
She's full of the blood of the saints, Revelation 17, verse 6, and the martyrs of Jesus. Meaning this religion has caused the death of many people who believed in Jesus Christ. Okay, so let's try to just make some more head progress in chapter 17. Could somebody read, please, from verse Revelation 17, verses uh, 7 to 18. Revelation chapter 17, verse 7 to 18. It's the entire passage there. Mm -hmm. Revelation 17. But the angel said to me, Why did you marvel? I will tell you the mysteries of the woman and of the beast. That is her which has the seven heads of the ten horns. This that you saw was the was and is not, and will then out of the bottomless pit and go to the and those who dwell on the earth will marvel, whose names are not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world. When they see the beast that was and is not, it is. Here is the mind which is, has a wisdom. And heads are the seven mountains on which the woman sits. There are also seven kings. Five have fallen, one is, and others come. And when he comes, he must continue to a short time. Continue a short time. The beast that was not is not, and is not, is himself also the eighth, and is of the seven, and is going to tradition. The ten horns which you saw, or the ten kings, received no kingdoms as yet, but they receive authority for for one heart as the kings with the beast. These are the one mind, and they will give their power and authority to the beast. This will make war with the lamb, and the lamb will overcome them. For he is of lords and king of kings, and those who are with him are called chosen and faithful. Then he said to me, the waters which you saw, where the sits are the people's multitudes, nations and towns. And the ten horns which you saw on the beast will hate the harlot, make her desolate and naked, eat her flesh and burn her with fire. For God has put in put it into their hearts to fulfill his purpose to be of one mind, give their kingdom to the beast, until the words of God are fulfilled. And the woman whom you saw is the great city which reigns over kings of the earth. Hmm. Um, so, the um, if you look, let's look at verse seven onwards. So he's saying, "Look, this beast that is carrying this woman with seven heads and ten horns, the beast which was, is not, um, and and uh, and yet is." That's that's how he ends that. Uh, you know, he he's referring to the Antichrist. The beast that was, is not, and yet is. So we saw in Revelation 13 that this this beast was uh, uh, killed, uh, not killed, but was, um, uh, uh, was wounded. You know, this is in verse 3, Revelation 13, 3, was mortally wounded. And again, in Revelation 13, 14, it was wounded by the sword and lived. So we saw earlier in Revelation 13 that there was some sort of an attack on this beast. And uh, yet it lived. And that's why people were so amazed of this beast. So that's why it's referring to here as this beast, which was, was not, and yet is. Meaning it was there that this man, Antichrist, was there. He seemed to have almost died. But he lived. That's the beast he's referring to. But this is the one 
who comes from the bottomless pit and will end up in perdition. I'm, I'm referencing Revelation 17, verse 8. So this is this is the Antichrist. He's going to have his eternal destination in the bottomless pit. He's going to be gone because we know he's being backed up by the dragon. And then he says, the seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sits. Now, mountains, we saw in Daniel chapter 2, mountains refers to kingdom. A kingdoms here in this case, seven mountains, seven kingdoms. And he also talks about seven kings. So seven heads, seven mountains, seven kings. Right? Five has fallen. One is, the other has not yet come. And then he says here, yeah, uh, the uh, and when he comes, he must continue a short time. The beast that was and is not is is not is himself also the eighth and is of the seven and is going to perdition. So generally, when people look at this, they they start counting from the kingdom of Assyria, Babylon, Mede, Persian, Greek, Greece, the kingdom of Greece, and the the Romans or. Um, so, and then the last one is uh, that of the Antichrist, uh, this kingdom the, of, of the Antichrist himself, which is, um, which comes onto the earth. So he's talking about these kingdoms that have uh, different empires that have existed and uh, Five have fallen, they've come and gone. One is, which is the one that has been set up by the Antichrist. And uh, it, 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 he's talking about this, the seventh and the eighth, which is kind of merged here. Uh, uh, the seventh one, which is going to perdition. Uh, so he's talking, basically we, we are looking at a, at a at a uh, a region, a world empire, that was uh, from which the Antichrist comes, or uh, uh, no, I wouldn't say a world empire, but a, a system out of which the Antichrist comes, and uh, he is establishing his own, but he is off the seventh, but he, the Antichrist, is going to end up in perdition. So the seventh and the eighth are almost interlinked because this Antichrist is coming out of that, setting up his own, his own, uh, we could use the word world order or a system or a kingdom, but he actually is from the seventh. He comes out of that and he sets himself up, uh, and but he's going to end up in perdition. And then there are these 10 horns, which we have seen earlier in Daniel, the 10 toes, the 10 horns representing 10 leaders or 10 kings. This is verse 12, Revelation 17, 12. And uh, they have received no kingdom as yet, but they receive authority for one hour as king by the beast. So remember, these 10 were the ones who helped bring the Antichrist into power. When you read Daniel, it's very clear that the small horn, little horn, comes up. He overpowers three of these ten, and then the rest of them put them in, put him into power. But he has made a promise to them, which seems to be indicated here, that he's going to give them influence. Right. So, the ten horns which you saw are ten kings who have received no kingdom as yet. So the Antichrist has come into power. They have helped him come into power, but they haven't received what he has promised them yet. They haven't received it. But he gives them authority for one hour as kings with the beast. So he's come into some sort of a thing saying, you can join me in my, you know, in my rulership. So they receive power for authority for one hour as kings with the beast. Who's the beast? He's the Antichrist. So he's setting 
them up. You know, so he's, you, it seems to indicate that when when he, they brought him into power, he said, "Look, I'm going to let you, you know, join with me in my rulership or leadership." But they haven't received it yet. But for one hour, and then sort of very brief period, he says, "Okay, now you can join me." Right, and. Um, uh, verse 13, they will be of one mind and they'll give their power and authority to the beast. This is verse 13. So these 10 are supporting this beast and they're backing him up. And they're going to make war with the lamb. But the Lord of Lords is going to overpower them. Verse 14. Now, Revelation 17, the angel explains to John, Revelation 17, 15, the harlot sitting on the waters is basically this woman extending influence over the nations. The ten horns, these, verse 16, these will hate the harlot, make her desolate, naked, eat her flesh, and burn with fire. For God has put it into their hearts to fulfill his purpose, to be of one mind, to give the kingdom to the peace until the words of God are fulfilled. And the woman you saw is that great city which reigns over the kings of the earth. So what's happening? If you try to understand this, you know, if I want to just sum up what this passage is saying is there have been many kingdoms in the past. Five of them have come and gone. We know all the way to the Roman Empire. Then here comes uh, a, a, another loosely held union of iron and clay, which we read in Daniel. Out of that comes Antichrist, the beast. But how was he helped into power? Ten horns have helped him to help him into come into power. And he has promised them to give rulership. Now they're all of one mind and they are supporting him. And he gives them authority for one hour. So briefly, you know, you're still supporting me. And verse 16 says, you know, uh, these 10 horns, you know, they will support the beast. But what is a beast doing? He is carrying this great harlot. He is promoting this world religion, this mystery Babylon. But what happens? Verse, verse, verse 16, these 10 leaders will, will turn against this world religion. They will hate the harlot. In other words, they have supported the beast for political reasons, for rulership. But what has a beast done? He's brought in a harlot. He's brought in a religious system, which is basically people worshiping him. So these leaders are going to turn against that. And verse 17 says, God has put it into their hearts to fulfill his purpose. That means this whole thing, them supporting the beast for a period of time and uh, giving him rulership, dominion, and then them realizing that, hey, what is this beast doing? He's actually bringing in a harlot. He's bringing in this false religion. And then them turning against that false religion, causing it to collapse. He says, God has put it in their hearts. God is orchestrating all of this. So what happens in the end? This great, this harlot becomes, verse 16, it, they make her desolate and burn her with fire. That means... These 10 kings who supported the Antichrist, they are going to turn against this whole thing, this religion. And they say, we don't want that. And they destroy it. So this whole religious system, this harlot who was riding on the beast is going to be destroyed. And mystery Babylon is going to collapse. This world religious system is going to be torn down because these 10 leaders withdraw the stages go against this religious system. And this was the religious system, verse 18, who influenced the whole world and even leaders of the world bought into it. Did you all understand chapter 17? Did, uh, any, are there any questions? You got it. Any questions? Okay. 
Um, take some time to read Revelation 17. If you have any questions, we can pick it up next week. We will continue with um, chapter 18 on from next week, Revelation. All right. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Just read it. See if you can explain it to yourself. If you understand it, um, bring it out. And then and if you have any doubts, you can ask me. It is a little difficult because of the kinds of images that we read off in Revelation 17. But uh, we will, uh, we will uh, uh, explain it if you have any questions. Okay. Let's take a break now. We will close. Uh, and we'll take a break, and I'll see you in the next class in about 10 minutes, okay? Um, somebody can pray, and uh, we will dismiss. Uh, Kieran, can you pray, and we'll dismiss? Yes, yes sir. We'll pray. Father God, we come before once again your throne, and we want to say thanking you, Father God, for your word and your wisdom and knowledge, Father God, help us to understand the whole book, Father, the revelation. And so many things will happen, Father God, the upcoming days and upcoming time, Father God. Father God, help us to move forward and be prepared for that, Father God. Lead us to the rest of the time submitting to you and Father God, take care of every sick. Almighty Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. I'll see you on the next class in 10 minutes. Thank you.